When I was younger, I used to relish the thought of being behind the wheel of a small sized hatchback like the VW Golf Mark IV GTI. Now for those who played Need for Speed Underground, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Now as I've gotten a few more grey hairs on top of my head, my requirements have changed, but my taste hasn't. The Passat, theoretically, caters for all my needs. It's got a more practical design and also that sporty look that I've longed for on that small sized hatchback when I was younger. Now here, the Passat GTE starts from £38,000, whilst the GT Advance, which we've got over here, starts from £42,000. Now, if you'd like to know the differences between the two trims, do check out our review on our website, which will be down in the description below. Also down there, you'll find links to our social media channels. So if you do have Instagram, we'd very much appreciate a follow. It's at totallyevnet. So let's see if this Passat GTE lives up to my expectations. Now let's first start off and talk about the design. Now this is very much a subjective matter, but in my opinion, I think VW have done a great job. From the front, you wouldn't even think this is an estate. You'd actually think it's kind of like a sporty GTI. And it's very much present when you look at the front grille or even the headlights. Now in terms of the side profile of the car, again, VW have given the car a sporty look, but yet one not, that's not too low or too flared up with its uh, side skirts. Here, the alloy rims, the 18 inch alloys, give the car that type of look that you would want from, well, a GT, in this case, a GTE variant of the car. As for the rear design of the car, it's not as sporty looking as the front. I mean, it is a Passat after all, it's written in bold letters over here. The thing you might want to bear in mind is that it does have fake exhausts. Now, the fake exhausts are a love it or hate it type of thing. For people who wish it had real exhaust, will say you shouldn't have this integrated here to fool people, whilst those like myself who think that it adds to the overall design, well, those people will have no issues with it. Now, in terms of operating the car, in terms of the boot, you can open it manually or indeed hold the button on the remote. If you do press that, you get this. Now I'm sure there's some sort of logical explanation as to why you did the Passat's rear boot opening sounds like a reversing truck, but nevertheless it's there. In terms of closing it, you can close it again automatically by pressing this button, but it's a bit of a reach. I'm just under six foot, so it's just worth bearing that in mind. So again, you might want to use the remote, but you will be presented with that beeping sound. And now we move on to the interior of the car. Now first off, I'd like to mention the overall trim and design. Now, while there's nothing wrong with it and the fact that VW have integrated a similar type of design to their other cars, I just would have liked a little bit more emphasis of the premium design. I mean, ultimately, this car does start from £38,000. And while its interior is very reminiscent to used cars from VW that have dated for over five to six years. So again, I just would have wished that VW had integrated a little bit more premium design. Now in the GT Advance, there's some LEDs which you can customize around the cabin that adds to the overall look and gives you a little bit of a personalization. Elsewhere, the steering wheel feels really nice to grip. There's some flappy paddles over here if you do want to enter manual mode and the buttons as well are here. Now the buttons themselves, are a little bit confusing because on the left hand side you've got the cruise control buttons whilst just under it you've got the volume up and down. On the right hand side you've got the instrument cluster and then you've got the previous and next buttons for media and here you still don't have a play and pause button if you have music connected via Bluetooth or let's say Android Auto or CarPlay. I just think it was a little bit of an oversight and I think the design on terms of the buttons of the steering wheel could have been a little bit better thought out. On the plus side, VW have integrated physical temperature controls. Now this is becoming even rarer nowadays because manufacturers are integrating another screen or integrating it within the infotainment display. This is not the case with the Passat GTE. It's got those physical controls and I'm very much a fan of them. They have also retained the gear stick. Now the gear stick is of course a Tiptronic gear stick so you can uh, adjust the, uh, the gears themselves but the, the, the handle of it is very much reminiscent of a petrol or diesel type of car and it's also very easy to use and it's got the right type of ergonomics. They've also integrated a USB type C port. Now while I do like being advanced and keeping up with the times, 
I would have just liked a regular USB socket. Thankfully, VW do have a little dongle which comes included. It's a USB Type-C to USB Type-A connector. So therefore, most people who have a smartphone that have a charging cable will be able to use this. There's also a USB Type-C port on the center console uh, storage over here. So you can access that as well and also store a few different cables or let's say your sunglasses. And this also does act as a wrist rest that can be adjusted. Now, further down on terms of the center console, you've got two cup holder spaces. It's a place to put some spare change and a 12 volt socket if you want extra power or let's say you've got a dash cam and you want to use your smartphone. Now, as for the infotainment display, it's a 9.2 inch touchscreen display. Now, I've got no issues whatsoever. It's a little bit slower than I would have liked and it also does support gesture controls which means you can kind of swipe by and you kind of get this audible sound. I do think the gesture controls are a little bit pointless and don't really add to kind of using the touchscreen display. Now through the infotainment display you can also integrate Apple uh, CarPlay or Android Auto which is great to see because well if you don't want to rely on the inbuilt GPS or let's say the navigation system of the VW system then you don't have to. Other than that, the controls are very intuitive and in terms of finding the menu or sub-menu systems, I had no issues whatsoever. On the left-hand side, you've got capacitive buttons. They've not got any haptic feedback, but here it's worth bearing in mind that you've got the dedicated volume controls, which are touch-based. I would have preferred a physical volume knob, but nevertheless, this is what VW have integrated. Moving on from the infotainment display, we've got the instrument cluster. Now, the instrument cluster is very clear. You can customize it to a certain degree through the buttons on the steering wheel or through the infotainment display but I think it's pretty comprehensive. You've got a power indicator and also an indicator of when it moves to the engine pair apart so I think the design of this is done really well from VW at least in my opinion and on the right hand side you've got a speedometer. Now these are not physical dies they're all digital so it's just worth bearing that in mind. On the side of the instrument cluster you've also got a, a physical indicator of the remaining charge and also the remaining petrol that you've got in the car. I mean ultimately this is a hybrid car. Now at the front of the driver you will notice a heads-up display. Now the heads-up display I think is a great addition it means that I don't really have to be peeking down at the instrument cluster I can keep my eyes planted at the road and and therefore means that I might be less likely to cause any sort of accidents. The thing I don't really like about the head-up display is its design. It kind of peers up from the dashboard and doesn't look too premium. Now another thing worth bearing in mind is the audio system that's comprised within the Passat GT Advance. Now here I don't have the Dyn Audio option which adds a few additional uh, speakers and um, bolsters the overall wattage of the system but here you've got eight speakers. There's unfortunately no subwoofer so unlike the the regular Passat or even the Dyna Audio regular Passat which has a subwoofer. This is completely taken away because the batteries rely and sit in the back boot where the subwoofer normally would sit. Now I've got a dedicated audio review of the Passat GT Advance so do check that out in the description below but in a nutshell what I will say is the stock option which I've got over here doesn't sound too bad and for its price I think it's to be commended. Now as for comfort the VW Passat GT does have a pretty hardish seat which is kind of expected with a GT type of car. With that said after driving several hours non-stop in this car I had no issues and I didn't have any sort of problems. The chair is semi-manual semi-automatic you've got um, electric controls at the back for the lumbar and for your your rear uh, back support whilst the actual movement of the front and back of the chair in terms of height are manual. I would have liked it to be all electric given the fact that again it's a pretty expensive car but nevertheless this is what you should expect. Now as for the rear seats they are a little bit harder in comparison to the front seats but still are very much comfortable for long periods of time. Now in terms of legroom you've got a decent amount I'm just under six foot and got pretty long legs and I have no issues here. I would have liked it to be slightly longer but nevertheless your mileage may vary. In terms of the headroom I really do like this because I have no issue sitting over here I think most tall size individuals won't have an issue either even sitting in a middle seat. Now if you do sit in the middle seat it is worth bearing in mind it's a lot more firmer so you won't be as comfortable so you might want to call shotgun if you're going to be sitting in a Passat GT Advance. Now the rear compartment if it's not used can uh, reveal uh, two cup holders and of course a armrest as well which is great for longer distance drives. Now as for storage space there is two little compartments in the front seats for the rear occupants 
response. And each of the doors, which has four doors here, can fit a 500 milliliter bottle with ease. Now the boot space is gonna be very much important for a lot of people. And it's worth bearing in mind that the GT Advance, the plug-in variant, um, essentially loses around 170 liters of space. And that is because the batteries are stored at the back and the floor has to be kind of raised a little bit. This might suffice for most people, specifically when you pop down the, the rear seats, which is really easy to do so from, from the back because there's a little lever and that reveals around 100, uh, 1,600 to 1,700 liters of space. So that should suffice for fitting uh, several mountain bikes or indeed fitting large luggage or even floorboards if you're gonna be using the car for that purpose. And now what about the driving? Well, first off, let's talk about maneuverability. Now, when you get into the car in terms of starting it, there's a start and stop button over here, as I mentioned before. And if you have your foot on the brake, it'll be ready. The head up display will then pop up and you know you're ready to get rolling. Now I'm just gonna pop in reverse over here and it will activate the rear view cameras. You can see you've got decent visibility and given this is the GT Advance, you've also got three 360 degree cameras and as such, you can also see the front and the rear of the car, including the sensors. So I'm just gonna to check to see if it's safe to maneuver. And just looking at the display over here, you can see it's quite easy to understand where the car will end up. And furthermore, if you are turning, so if I were to turn over here and go into the Mercedes over here, it will show you that case. And over here on the left-hand side, you've also got an indication as to where the car will also be pointing towards, which can be useful if you're gonna be um, parking near a curb, so in order for you not to curb your wheels. Now, what I really want to allude to over here is the fact of how easy the car is to drive and further when it comes to maneuvering. So first off, we're just gonna go over a bump and you can see over there, it just um, locks the car. I just press OK over here. The bump over here, you can feel it, so there's no denying that. But what I really love is how the car actually handles. Now you can change this in terms of the steering comfort, but when it comes to actually making turns, so for example over here, making a full turn, the estate makes absolute light work of any corners. And that is something to be really shouted about because this estate really doesn't feel like driving an estate. It feels like driving in a hatchback. And it's something that I have to really applaud VW about because it's not something that a lot of manufacturers are able to achieve, namely when it comes to larger sized vehicles, which might have a smaller turning circle. And that really doesn't come across when you are driving the Passat GTE Advance. Now that's all well and good, but what about when it comes to actually driving the car? Well, first off, let's just talk about the seat comfort. Now I know I, I talked about this a little bit before, but the seat comfort is great. And for long distance drive or even inner city, smaller drives, the car feels great in terms of sitting comfortably in it and you don't really get tired. The suspension is slightly hard as you might have noticed before as I went over that bump. While that bump is quite, um, well, let's just say quite sensitive and therefore you will feel it no matter what car you drive in, this car is got kind of a blend in terms of its suspension. It's neither really soft and neither is it really hard. It's kind of sits in, a, in between. So for example, going over this bump over here, I kind of glaze over it. Whilst when we come to this one, which is slightly bigger and therefore I can't just run over it, you feel it, but it's not as much as you might expect and therefore on the whole leads to a comfortable drive. Now, what about in terms of its performance? Now the car has got a 1.4 liter engine and also has a um, electric motor in there, which aids it in terms of enabling its E-mode. Now E-mode is enabled by default when you drive the car. Now, while this is all well and good in order for you to conserve as much petrol as possible, I would have liked it if VW integrated a way where it would save its previous mode. So therefore, if you were in GTE mode or for example, in its dynamic mode, that the car would preserve that state and when you switch on the car again you don't have to go through that cycle again specifically if you don't want to be running in in e-mode now in terms of e-mode or in terms of its all electric range vw claim around 34 miles of range when in reality that's around 25 miles so it's not too bad in terms of its overall claim 
However, the fact that the car only has around 25 to 30 miles of range is a little bit disappointing. I would have just liked to have seen a little bit more range included with this car, specifically because that's what you're paying for. You're paying for a plug-in hybrid and you'd pro probably want a little bit of a longer range. Now, range aside, the car is quite quick to charge. It takes around three hours to charge via the Type 2 port, which is found at the front of the car. You can find Type 2 ports pretty much quite commonly in the UK at least, and in public charge points or indeed in home charging points. Now, there is another way of recouping energy, and that's via regenerative braking methods. Now, VW have integrated this via the gear lever. If you were to shift down on the gear lever, it would turn into B mode. Now it's great to see B mode, it allows you kind of a one pedal approach and therefore not having to resort to the brake pedal as much. Again, just very much like the E mode, I would have liked B mode to be integrated as soon as you turn on the car or for it to remember your previous selection. In my case, I really like driving the car in B mode, so I wish that was the case as soon as I switched on the car, rather than me having to turn on the car and then shift down on the gear lever each time to reinitiate B mode, because it wouldn't have done that in the past. Now, aside regenerative braking methods and indeed its electric portion of the car, the car is actually really fun to drive and quite nimble. Now there's different type of drive modes you can choose from, but my favorite one is GTE mode. Now the GTE mode essentially is a hybrid function. It integrates both the electric portion and the petrol variant. Now as well, I was just saying that, it switched into the petrol variant and you barely hear the petrol engine at the background. It's a 1.4 liter engine and which outputs around 215 brake horsepower and 0 to 60 in around 7.6 seconds. On the whole, the car is actually really fun and quite nippy to drive. It makes you really forget the fact that you're driving an estate and in fact kind of makes you think that you're driving a hatchback instead. Now, as for the car's transmission, it's really seamless. You've got a six-speed DSG. So you can use the flappy paddles. You can also use the gear lever if you prefer in terms of going up and down in terms of the gears. But in terms of its automatic function, it's really well done. And VW have integrated it again yet really well. So if you were to wanting a kick down feature, so for example, over here, if I put my foot down, it will shift down and indeed give you that speed that you want. So the transmission is really well done. There's no issues whatsoever with it. And this also, again, kind of brings me into my point of this hybrid function as to how seamless the car is when transitioning between all electric power and its petrol power. Now here, as we're getting onto the motorway, I do also want to talk about its total range. So even though we talked about its all electric range, the car's range is around 500 miles with electric and petrol combined, at least from my test, that's what I found. Now that's not too bad, but it's just worth bearing in mind that if you do expect a little bit more, which I think the normal Passat gives you a little bit more range, then it's just something you should be mindful about. Now as for cabin noise, in terms of road noise and cabin noise, the car is pretty good. There is a little bit of road noise that comes through the tires, but on the whole, you don't really hear the car all that much. And specifically, if you put a little bit of music in the background, suddenly you won't hear the car all that much. Now it is not to be compared to, for example, an Audi A8, which is ultra silent, or a car which is a little bit more premium and therefore has a little bit more padding in the interior. But for a, price, uh, for a car of its price and furthermore of its type, in other words, an estate, I'm actually pleasantly surprised as to how VW have achieved relatively low wind noise and also relatively low road noise. And as for the driver assistance systems, I quite like them. There's adaptive cruise control. Uh, there's also lane keep assist, which is actually really smart. You can disable these features if you don't like them. But what I really like is the fact that they actually do the job as you might expect. Now, adaptive cruise control, I did have a few issues with this and I have had issues in the past with VW systems whereby it would pick up a, um, a speed limit. So for example, right now it's 40, see a slip road, let's say for example, it's 20 and think it's a 20 mile zone and therefore decelerate the car if you're in cruise control. 
However, if you just keep your eyes on the road or keep your eyes in terms of the head-up display or even your instrument cluster, that shouldn't be a problem and won't be an issue uh, when you're driving um, yourself and taking control a bit. Now, in terms of the actual lane keep assist, I found it to be pretty accurate and pretty good. Um, again, it does ping around sometimes if you are getting into more complex turns, but on the whole, I think VW have integrated a good system here and adds to a little bit of extra safety. So what is my verdict on the VW Passat GTE, or specifically the GTE Advance? Well, subjectively, I really like its design. I think VW have done a good job over here in integrating a sporty design, but one that's also practical. In terms of its performance, I was actually pleasantly surprised. 0 to 60 in around 7.4 seconds lives up to my expectations, and it also means the car is pretty nimble to drive in inner city roads. Furthermore, in terms of maneuverability, the car is very easy to drive. It doesn't take long getting used to this, a longer state car. And if you're coming from a hatchback, I think you will love driving this around. The issue here is twofold. One, in terms of its interior. I know the GTE Advance and furthermore this VW Passat, it's supposed to be kind of reminiscent of VW's older range, but I just would have liked a little bit more attention to detail or a little bit more of a premium feeling design. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong. It's just that if I'm paying 38,000 pounds or in this case, 41 to 42,000 pounds, I'd expect a little bit more of a premium type of design. Elsewhere, the all electric range is somewhat of a disappointment. I know that VW have integrated a good sort of hybrid system. It switches between all electric and the, its uh, petrol engine really seamlessly. But I just wish that there was a longer all electric range, meaning that I would emit less tailpipe emissions or furthermore, just be enjoying its all electric range and therefore refueling or recharging in this respect for a lot cheaper. So on the whole, the VW Passat isn't a bad car. It's just a little bit more expensive and one that you should potentially consider over some of its other alternatives. Now you might disagree or agree with me, so let me know in the comments below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. If you'd like to see more content like this, or indeed would like to see more of my face or indeed my gray hairs, then subscribe, like, and favorite share as it'll always help the channel grow. I've been Chris from Totally EV. Take care and bye-bye.